Gemini 3 Pro was launched this week on November 18th and Google is calling it their most intelligent model to date. I want to quickly jump into building an app together, no coding needed in minutes. But before that, I want to share some important context. Gemini 3 Pro is considered an improvement to Google's multimodal AI. By multimodal, it means that the model can take and analyze various types of inputs from text, image, video, and audio. Also, Gemini 3 Pro is considered to have one of the highest context window size in the industry. Context window size, what it means is basically the size of the input that model can take in just one operation. It's about remembering. The higher the size of the context window is, it means that the model can handle more complex tasks and conversation. Gemini 3 Pro's context window size is 1 million. Just compare it to uh, GPT 5.1's context window size, which was rolled out two weeks ago by OpenAI, being 400,000. You can access Gemini 3 Pro through Gemini app, AI search mode, or Google's AI studio. Here is my takeaway after playing with Gemini 3 Pro for a couple of days. I believe that the combination of this powerful model together with Google's studio, AI studio, makes it a super powerful tool. For those of you not familiar, Google AI Studio is this ecosystem that Google has built that you can leverage different models as well as different Google ecosystem tools such as Maps, Search, Gmail, your own calendar, Sheet. So all of them in one place to make building easier. Let's go into the demo so I want to show you how these two come together. All right. Here is the Google AI Studio. The home section is the overview of everything you can, you can access, you can add, basically build a new app and you can say that I want this app to leverage Nana Banana and also I want it to also be empowered by voice. What I want to show you is actually a different way that you can, different interface that you can leverage to build an app. One quick call out, everything you see I'm doing here is for free. I've made sure that I removed all the paid API keys just to be sure. So in the build section, very powerful uh, tool. You can first go down or scroll down and see the app gallery. These are the apps that already built by the other, some super cool um, apps. Um, I see my favorite, which was about bring everything to life is no longer in this list it was basically giving the model any sketch uh, doodle and it would return some interactive graphs for those of us in product development it could be super handy tool but let's take this simple game and i'm pretty sure this has been built by a couple lines of basically description this is a simple app that you need to avoid hitting obstacles let's see how long it takes for me to die Oops. <laughs> All right. So what I want to show you, you, you're already seeing some improvements that the app is suggesting. Um, maybe you want to add level of visual, implement collectible letter glow. But what I want to do, let's add background music to, to this game. Make it action music. I don't know if it's a genre or not, but let's see. I want to show you how long it takes. So 127, eight seconds. Funny thing is that previously it would take months for building this app. And I'm sensing that soon the bar is going to change so much that even 145 seconds would be like, oh, too long, which is crazy, right? All right. So let's see what we get. Not too bad. I need to get better in this game. 
anyways all right so let's build an app together uh here in the us we are approaching black friday holidays doing shopping is very much top of mind for so many people i want an app that i can upload it item that i want to buy i want this app to search google for the lowest price available i also want it to be um, my friend challenging me a little bit whether i really need it and if yes whether i can wait or not and if i can wait um, I want this app to look into the price trends in the past and propose whether there's a better time in the future to purchase that item. Here's the prompt that I want to start with. You can definitely get to the first version um, with significantly shorter or you can go and um, add more specifics in there. I think that it's a good place to start. I'm expecting this to run for a couple of minutes there is one issue that is auto fixing it while we're waiting there was one line of error that i was facing when i first started using google ai studio and gemini 3 pro um it wasn't auto fixing i went online so many other people were facing the same issue there were some suggestions such as um restarting but i ended up fixing it by switching from my wi-fi to my phone uh, internet it seems like my internet service provider was actually blocking google so just in case that you face uh, you face an error that you weren't quite sure how to fix it so it is fixing one error in here you can look at what is happening here So it preloaded the app after the fix. Alright, so full screen. So let's drop the screenshot of the item I want. I found the Bowers and Wilkins PX8 tan headphones for $749 on the official Bowers and Wilkins website. Do you need them now or can you wait for a price drop? Can you search other sources as well? Actually, that was uh, a miss uh, on models uh, part because I asked it to search on Google for multiple sources. I found the Bowers and Wilkins PX8 tan headphones for 519 at Crutchfield, which is currently the best deal. Do you want to buy them now or wait for a potential price drop? Okay, let's go and say 519 is correct. It has access to some of the sources, but not all. This is the used one, by the way. So that makes sense. Maybe in future iteration, I want the app to follow up whether I'm okay with the used item or not, but good for now. I ultimately want to go back and um, change the prompt so the app become more like my friend, challenge me a little bit whether I really need it and whether I can wait, but okay for now, I'm gonna respond and say that I, I can actually wait. I can actually wait. All right, so let's go back. Let's see, auto fixing shows up in here. While we're waiting, one quick thing, you might see a lot of content out there saying you can build an app within minutes. But what I would like to share with you here is that getting to a good initial proof of concept and down the line to good working product end to end might require back and forth rounds of iteration so having patience and curiosity in this process definitely makes it more enjoyable so it's auto fixing
Going to the UI options, a couple things that I would go back and improve. The prompt, I want the UI to be more clear on what this app is, what it does. Um, maybe I want it to be beyond just a chat interface. There are some good ideas to consider here, such as maybe this app can also take in your budget and budget limit and enforce it, or it can track your previous decisions, uh, shopping decisions, and it can be even proactive proposing you uh, similar items you want. All right, so reloading the app was great. Let's do this. I found the best deal for the Bowers and Wilkins PX7 S2E headphones at $274.99. Do you need them now or can you wait for a potential price drop? It's actually PX8, not PX7, but okay for now, but definitely needs to be called out back to the model. Um, let's say that I can wait. I can wait for a potential price drop. system to wait for me to talk and then send that that those are the small things that um, you can get feedback to to model but not a priority at this point I've set a reminder to track the price of the Bowers and Wilkins PX7 S2e headphones for you I'll let you know if the price drops I uh, what we got in here for the initial prompt that I gave is is okay so good enough it's just basically uh, i was able to understand what are the things that are more important for me what are the pieces that i need to go back and fix the prompt but the initial pri uh, pr uh, prompt that you saw was very basic know that there are so many ways that you can improve your prompt you can give it good good example you can give it bad example um, on that note, what I want to show you is a tool that I've been using, um, OpenAI Prompt Optimizer. Um, I didn't use it for, for this specific use case. So here is uh, the GPT 5.1 Prompt Optimizer. So I'm going to give it my prompt, initial prompt that I gave to um, the Google Gemini and what it does it basically optimizes the prompt um, based on prompt engineering principles and it also adds system requirements basically your product requirement it becomes your product requirement doc so it says what should be the input what should be the output it starts bringing system component that needs to be supported. So building the next version of the app, definitely I would go in, optimize my prompt many times back and forth with LLMs to get to a product that works better. So again, even this I'm expecting that if I go in, I'm going to find a lot of improvement opportunities in this. But know that prompt optimizer exists, you can use, but don't rely on them 100%, meaning that look at them as your assistant. Every time that you get a version, make sure that you check it, improve it, go back and forth, iterate on it to get to a better prompt. So we started with very simple prompt. Um, it was okay to give me just very basic proof of concept app that helped me understand what I liked, what I didn't like. It requires me to go back and forth, work with the model, improve my prompt. Here is the tool, one of the tools that you can use. I've been using OpenAI Prompt Optimizer to get to at least your first version of product requirement document. And again, this journey is going to be back and forth working with your model to get to a product that end to end delights the users.